All right. Um, so everyone, welcome. For those of you who have joined us, we're going to just wait a few more minutes for our third guest, um, Yuri, and um, then we'll kick off to answer some of the questions um, and do a small introduction as well. Um, so yeah, we'll just um, wait, but maybe while we're doing that, um, if the three participants want to introduce themselves so long, uh, we'll start with Rosanna. Would you like to say hi? Where are you calling from? Hi, everyone. I'm Rosanna. I'm calling from the Philippines. Um, so it's actually uh, summer has begun here. It's a lovely 35 degrees. No! <laughs> <laughs> And my son keeps from asking when Vicky will come stay with us again. Oh, Mirku. Tell him I got worse at, um, at Minecraft, if that's even possible. I really got worse. I forgot everything he taught me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, will do. Um, I spent most of my career working with young people um, in the education sector. Um, you know, first with bigger organizations like UNICEF and the UN, and then eventually uh, nonprofits. And I started um, Sparkle Lab, which is a startup and makerspace for kids by kids in the Philippines. Right. Um, which, yeah. And so um, we, I founded it in 2012. And right now we continue to offer our programs. We also now have our very own school which uses kind of play and steam and maker education to kind of make kids fall in love with learning. That's great. Thanks. I'm glad mm -hmm. to have you with us. Mm -hmm. And um, for our next introduction, we'll go to Tabiso. Would you like to give us a small intro to who you are, where you're from? Um, anything about the weather? Welcome to you. <laughs> yes. Hello. Hello. Good morning from New Zealand, uh, originally from Botswana. Uh, and I run a social enterprise known as These Hands. And at These Hands, we've developed this sort of uh, bottom-up approach to community empowerment and technological development. So the process is known as the co-creative design process, which we developed with MIT D-Lab. And we've been using it in Botswana, Zambia, Tanzania, Namibia, South Africa, and other pockets of Africa like Ghana, Uganda, in the refugee camp and in Kenya as well. So I've been fortunate to be given an Edmund Hillary Fellowship to come and set up here in New Zealand, uh, working with some of the indigenous people here. Uh, so yeah, and our secret source is that we have also developed a USSD-based social network platform, uh, which will allow people who without internet connectivity to not rely on internet, but to use their 2G cell phones and be able to connect amongst themselves to our post-training services. So when I saw this, because I'm a member of the Africa Makerspace Network, oh, great. Uh, I felt inclined to apply and uh, see what we can do to support. And so today I'm here to learn more and hopefully we can go further beyond here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I think for um, everybody here, we've got a few people or more that have joined, but maybe what I'll do is... Um, just uh, hand over to Vicky to tell you a little bit more about the project, Vicky, if you'd be so kind as to share a little bit about it in terms of what we're thinking about, what we're looking for, and I guess the crux of why why we're all here. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and Yuri, the third guest, just texted me. He's on his way. Five minutes. Um, so, Toloka is um, a horribly bad joke um, on the word Toloka. Toloka means uh, it's a form of solidarity in uh, Ukraine and a lot of other Slavic countries. And it's um, people coming together. It's, it's very farmers related. So farmers came together, built one shed for one farmer, the one summer, and then the next summer it was someone else's turn. So literally everybody coming together to support one um, and then to keep the ball rolling. <clears throat> and um, uh, we we chose it because it's it's like a really bad dad joke on 
with a car at the end, C-A-R, because we needed a word for our mobile maker spaces and nobody was in a very good headspace to be super fun, creative and not dead jokey. So now this poor thing is called Toloka forever and it's mobile maker spaces in Ukraine. Um, right now there's four operational ones and one that's uh, waiting to be registered again, which is a horrible bureaucratic process, not made easier by the German government. And um, they do amazing things. They go to different maker spaces or community spaces, do very different workshops ranging from um, teaching kids 3D design and 3D printing, working with veterans or so soldiers that returned from the war um to working with communities on upgrading their community areas to renovating houses that are now used for housing internally displaced people to um literally repairing windows and houses that got bombed in ukraine and um because they're mobile they are of course, connecting communities, spreading the word about this do it yourself, do it with others approach of making and thereby also spreading the word about other makers all around the world um, because everything that Tolo Cars produce is open source. Um, they also use a lot of open source designs, of course, in the workshops. And um, from the from the beginning, from the start, the idea was that Toloka should be also a vehicle to enable direct collaborative projects between international and Ukrainian makers. Now, it's of course a bit tricky if you ask people that um, have not been very closely connected to a global maker community. Um, so what do you want to make? What are maker projects we can help you with? So we, we, it took us a while to find the right people and to, yeah, also get into the right mindset and to free up headspace for this, especially with the colleagues that are in Ukraine. Um, but now I think we're there and um, very happy to have Roman here as well. And then Yuri is going to join us in a minute. I think he's not here yet because they are both, they are two of the three co-founders of the Ukrainian Makers Association, which is um, yeah a, a, a national association of makers in Ukraine um, who literally gather makers in the country. And um, so I have a good way of reaching out to all of them. And um, we've been all working together for months now. Um, I am not working for GIZ, but with GIZ, which is the German Development Service um, Agency, who implements this project um, on behalf of the German Ministry of Economic Development and Cooperation. And um, it's a bigger idea. So the bigger idea behind Tolo Cars is that these people if they are all connected, will contribute significantly to the reconstruction of Ukraine in a better way, <clears throat> in a more distributed, more decentralized, more circular way than the economic and production system of Ukraine worked before the war. Um, Yuri always says never waste a good crisis and um, we intend to do that, um, no matter how terrible the crisis is. And um, and yeah, and so there are these trucks. There's the connection that that Gig is is um, supporting a lot with. Then there are mobile medical maker spaces in the making right now, which are only going to focus on prosthesis and orthesis making. There are school projects. There is the um, there's city to city collaborative projects. Um, there's going to be a funding facility for even bigger projects by makers in Ukraine. Also connecting the civil society with makers in Ukraine. All of that is coming. Um, and a lot is happening already now. And uh, I'm very excited to be here. If you have questions on the bigger overall project, uh, let me know.
Thanks. Thank you so much, Vicky. Um, so uh, we'll we'll do an introduction from our other two colleagues that are here with us today. And then there's not too many of us, so I think we can raise hands and ask questions. Um, and you could just direct them at who you'd like to, um, and then we'll try and field them like that. Um, if more people join, we'll just start using the chat to raise questions. But I will hand over to Yuri. He's just popped in the room just to say hello and introduce yourself and a little bit more about your involvement with Tolokar and um, I guess a bit more of an insight if you're prepared to have some some insight into what we could do to support and uh, maybe just a bit of background. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Happy to be here with you. Thank you for an invitation. Uh, uh, so uh, our background started as a Maker Faire producers. We uh, produced Maker Faires in five cities here in Ukraine and for for producing that, we had to know every maker hackerspace fab lab here. And uh, we uh, organically uh, dive deep into their uh, challenges and uh, started to talk to them and produce uh, in 2021, we produced uh, summit for makerspace leaders. Uh, and uh, there was a kind of uh, a kind of building network between the spaces. Uh, so now in a Tolokar project, we connected uh, this these spaces. We, we connect them to the Tolokar program to interventions uh, in again in different city across the, the country. I think, uh, yeah, this is it generally. Thank you. Um, thanks very much, Yuri. And uh, last but not least, Aziz, if you could just uh, give us an introduction to you and uh, your background and uh, your involvement here with us today as part of Jig and Toloka. Yeah, thank you, Kirsten. And uh, thank you, Vicky and Yuri, for the introduction. Yeah, so like uh, my background, uh, like I spent many years in the production, industrial production. And uh, in 2018, I joined the humanitarian uh, field, let's say. And uh, so at that time, I started to work in the humanitarian context by making and uh, doing things. So it's a connection between maker spaces and uh, humanitarian response. Uh, so this is my, my background in a, in a brief. And about my involvement in this project, uh, this is the second phase I'm working in this project. The first phase I worked uh, with the guys in Germany and Ukraine to in the planning. And now let's say this is, let's say, let's call it as implementation phase in the, the, this one. Uh, about, about this call and about the total car uh, project. Uh, so I, I'm, I think about the total cars like an opportunity and a chance to build the bridges between inside Ukraine and outside Ukraine. So those bridges and this collaboration between maker spaces inside and maker spaces outside Ukraine, it's a real chance and it's, it's a, a real window to build a service of value and a product of value. Things that matter uh, to people's life. So at the end, what we are doing right now and things what we are going to do in the future will affect on people's life inside Ukraine and also will, will affect on uh, rebuilding the, the, the country and to address humanitarian uh, issues and needs. So this is really a great opportunity to, to do things, to do things that have value and to know more people and to build the bridges with other makers. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, Aziz. Um, so as um, you know, some more of you have joined, uh, just a bit of a background. So at this stage, what we're working on is a collaboration call um, to co-design. So the idea is really that there's a linkage between makers um, working and supporting Ukraine, as well as coming from anywhere else in the globe, um, which is something that the Global Innovation Gathering really works towards is this global inter interconnectivity and global innovation um, across borders. And the call's gone out, as you would have seen last week, and there's still you know, a week and a bit 
uh, to go for all the applications to come in. And we're hosting this Q&A session with Yuri, Aziz, and Vicky to help with questions that some of you have already seen, such as, you know, how do we collaborate? What type of products should we be looking at? Um, and we've identified the two streams from a needs assessment, the one being product development and prototyping, and the other side being workshops and training. Um, and as you've seen in the call document, we're really looking for everything to be fully open source, which will be put onto an open source repository called Apropedia. Um, that we will facilitate just in case there's a question on that, but it really needs to be the manuals, the how to, so that more and more people will be able to produce these um, products and services that can really assist people on the ground in Ukraine. So if anybody has any questions, uh, now's the time, you may raise your hand and I will hand over to you and then you can ask a question for any of our team that's here or just generally and we can see who can best support your question. Or you can just unmute and ask a question to Penny if you have one. Oh, Tavisa, please go ahead. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so uh, from what I gathered, uh, so we want to follow the workshop and training stream. And uh, because it's something that we believe we have vast experience with, uh, we've also done it in Thailand, in Benghang Wow. So what I wanted to ask was, how safe is it first and foremost, because my team has asked me uh, to enter Ukraine at the moment. Uh, secondly, where would uh, the training possibly happen? And then thirdly, would, uh, because I didn't really see it in the, in the write-up, would you be covering visas and flights for the team to come to Ukraine? Uh, will the food, and accommodation costs be covered by yourselves or they'll be covered by what you'll be paying. Uh, yeah, so those are my few questions for now. Uh, I'll, I'll leave those to be answered before I can ask any other further ones. Great, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with Vicky as the right person to answer that question um, in terms of that being a viable option? Um, <clears throat> well, let me let me answer with a with a with a question as well before I go into security and all of that. Um, what's the limit again per project? And Tabisa, do you think you can uh, like like I don't know. For me, that's fine, and um, I don't want to go into the details of how gig handles the money but i think for 5 to 8k that's a bit um tight to cover um an in person workshop with travel on from that so i i don't i don't know but my first thought was can we do that online and security wise it changes from day to day and or not from day to day anymore but it could could change um, quickly again. I'm leaving for Ukraine on Sunday. Um, it's for me safe enough to go there, um, but I've also undergone safety and security training and I can read Ukrainian kind of by now. So it's a bit easier for me. And then it highly depends on where you want to go. So the East is off limits, I would say, for, for people who have never been. Um, Kiev is okay, and um, the West, Lviv and Ivano-Frankivsk specifically, I would say are relatively safe. Um, anyone who goes, goes on their own risk. There is no health insurance. Um, we are very closely connected to Kados, who organize the medical evacuations, though. So even if you just cut a finger, there's... Um, medics there who can help you but i think money is the bigger issue and um yeah i i don't I, uh, there's not a big problem getting money for workshops that make sense in ukraine right now so if you have a ukrainian partner and you're super excited about giving this workshop you absolutely want to go 
I'm very happy to follow up on this um, and find other sources, but I think we would be taking too much out of the big pot that GIG has and taking it away from the other projects if we did that. But over to Kirstine for that. Not sure. Um, great. Thanks for that information, Vicky. And I think to be so, what I would say is within, you know, it's the budget of up to 3,000 for the equipment and things like that, and then 5,000 euros for the team, for the time, basically, that what I would recommend as well, looking at what Vicky said for budget and expense covering that you could consider to, to do a hybrid workshop, maybe with the team that we can find to match you with or support on the ground in Ukraine to do some of the actual training, whereas maybe most of it could be developed in an online format um, if that's something that we could be able to offer, uh, depending on obviously connectivity and what type of machinery, et cetera, would be needed at the various spaces where the training could take place. Um, and that might just be, let's say, a quick, quick and dirty way of being able to provide the training, support people on the ground, but not necessarily having to take in a whole team um, from, from your hub or your group from um, African side. Uh, that's just one recommendation from me. I'm not sure if Aziz, uh, you also have any recommendations on on the theme or the stream of workshops and training in this context. Yes, like um, I, I would recommend like uh, doing like if it's like training and, and workshops to to do that online because like because security issues it's really complex and complicated to send someone inside Ukraine. But uh, if we have to send more someone, I, I will go with you that we don't have to send the whole team, yeah. Thanks. Um, does that to be to answer your question or is there anything else that we could provide more information on for you there? Yeah, it, it does answer my question, uh, <clears throat> but so the, the slightly unfortunate thing is that our training has to be physical. So if we have to go to a refugee camp, we wouldn't necessarily have to have a problem with that uh, because we've done it, like I mentioned, in other refugee camps, like in Uganda and in other places in Africa. Uh, but all we always want to make sure is that whilst we are there, it will be secure enough. In terms of exploring a hybrid, uh, because the people that we would then engage with have never used the process the way we use it, uh, you know, other people may may think it's a typical design thinking type of training, but it has a lot of empathy built in. It has a lot of designing with the people and designing by the people. Uh, and we use various techniques and it's largely practical, less theory. In fact, no theory at all. So either myself as the lead instructor would have to be there and try to form a team with some of the people in Ukraine who can become our design facilitators. But it would mean that I would have to take a few, a week or two just to get them acclimatized to the process of how we train and how we deliver the training rather than bringing people from Africa who can then join me. Uh, so I'm, I'm open to exploring both avenues, but the hybrid element in terms of the online version would be like less likely to achieve the goal that it is intended to achieve because you can't teach people hands-on work, uh, online, unfortunately, because I'll have to demonstrate some things, uh, which they will then have to demonstrate or implement on their other side as well so but yeah. if there's an opportunity maybe of flying me as the lead instructor and then building a team around some of the people that work with yuri or the maker spaces down on the ground then that's a possibility uh, okay. in terms of security i'd be willing to to stomach it <laughs> uh, because you know i believe like you 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 mentioned yuri said it's never Good to waste a good crisis so it's it will be a, a stepping stone to eventually getting people to become ready post the war or even during this part time where they're really caught up and as a falling walls engage uh 
winner myself, it's sort of the work that I like doing as well, because normally international development organizations would have realized use a somewhat a top-down approach. So ours is last mostly bottom-up. Yeah. And we don't really have projects defined as to what they will do. We use the process and the process is what gets the people to actually come up with the challenges themselves and eventually the solutions. So yeah, that's why well, online would be very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to be. So I think it's something that we will uh, maybe as the rest of the questions come out, uh, come back to just to see if there's any more things that we could comment on. But for now, I think, um, you could go ahead with the proposal. And as Vicky said, we may just have to consider how best to fund it based on that. But just bear in mind that the budget is for everything in one. So you'd have to consider how that works um, in this yeah. scheme of things. And if it is more and it's a really valuable workshop, maybe there's something else we could try and support or get support for. Um, yeah. But great, thank you. Um, Aitan, I'd like to, if I pronounce that correctly, just pass over to you to raise your question as well. Is it Aitan? 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 I will unmute you. So you know it's you. Um, okay, well, in the meantime, um, he, he, she asked uh, if it would be possible to work with Ukrainians outside of Ukraine. Um, Vicky, does that make sense for the call, for the visualization of the outcomes that you had in mind? I I don't know, um, but I would say nothing speaks against it if it benefits people on the ground, I would say. Um, okay, so basically, I hope that answered, he said, uh, she, he said they don't have a camel or a mic, but I think that that answered the question, that I think speaks against it, so you could give it a go. Um, I'm gonna hand over the next question is from um, Rosanna, if you wanna go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, I think my question was more about the process um, and um, if there's any way that we can better understand the needs, I guess, of communities on the ground. Um, maybe through the lens of a variety of stakeholders, just so that what we pitch actually makes sense. Because I guess they would best know what their needs are at a given point in time and how we can co-design and co-create together. Hi, uh, like, uh, thank you, Rosanna. I, I think this is really important uh, about the needs. So... Like for people outside from Ukraine, I think we need to, to, to think about a mechanism or something that we can share our needs to them. Uh, this is really a good point, uh, Rosanna. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on that note, and I gave fair warning via signal message. I hope Yuri is there. Yuri did conduct a needs assessment within the maker community. Um, which informed the call. That's why there's these two streams. And um, on the specific product that might get developed on that stream, it's um, the needs change. So um, in winter, it was um, insulation and heat. Obviously, in summer, that's not going to be that important. We're expecting a lot of um, water and sanitation um to be requested again and um i would say that like i'm hoping that the call gets spread far and wide in ukraine as well and i know there's some people from ukraine in the call um so i would hope that we would do it that way around also that it's not so much people from the world saying hey i can offer this and that but that we that we um go with Ooh, look, we have this person that can offer this, and we have that person who needs exactly this, and then we match. That's that's how I was hoping this would go. But um, yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna frantically search for people who want to build a Yoda hat um, that blinks, <laughs> unless somebody <laughs> requests that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, Vicky. And um, Yuri just made a comment here as well, saying that, you know, uh, just in terms of not so much process, Rosanna, but I think we can come back to that um, for the question for using or working with um, Ukrainian makers outside of Ukraine, that there's such a big need for support with within the country, especially at this stage. And the people outside might be in a better position to do different things, but the people actually in Ukraine are the ones who really need the help um, and the support. So if there's the possibility to match or to find somebody to support and work with, to prototype, develop, train, um, or provide workshops for within Ukraine, that would be um, ideal. Um, Yuri, you wanted to add something? Um, yeah, thank you, Christian. Um, so I think it was eight or 10 months ago, we, we promoted the idea for Ukrainians outside the country to visit European mostly maker hacker spaces. We connected people to Vulkan Network and Vulkan Network had, I think they still have their website opportunities for Ukrainian artists and makers. And I think they have some funding, small funding for accommodation even. So if we have some resources, we could shake this kind of support, but again, from my perspective, it's better to focus to help inside the country and uh, show people the these uh, opportunities and tools and collaboration tools and the, this GitHub uh, uh, because it will it will have uh, much better impacts uh, he, uh, here. Uh, our our small resources will from from my perspective again will have uh, much uh, better impact if we focus uh, to work inside the country. On, on on land here. Thank you, Yuri. Um, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense and hopefully that also guides everybody a little bit more on, on what can come out of that. Um, does anybody else have, there's not another question currently in the chat, but if anybody else has one, you can raise your hand. Ricardo, you had your hand raised earlier. It was a mistake. I was about to add a reaction, sorry. Oh, okay. No problem. All reactions and hands are welcome. Um, so I'll just, uh, if anybody else wants to raise their hand or unmute your mic, you may go ahead and ask any question or make a comment. You're welcome. Um, Irena, you had some questions in the chat. Would you like to raise any of those now? Hello, hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, happy to see all of you. So I have these questions, but it's more like re regarding the other options about workshops and training. Because uh, right now I'm working, I try to work with the community in the city, Kamenets Podilsky. It's in the central part of Ukraine, but the community there like is still, they still got to know each other and they're like, it, they don't have the community, right? So, and um, so the idea is about bringing people together and making some workshops and training. But what I see from the application form, you really need the partner who has experience in making and prototyping, who has already some achievements. And I know like separate people who are like work individually, but uh, because they work as a private uh, enterprises and they don't cooperate so much. So maybe you have something, um, what can bring people together to work together, like with the um, limited amount of time. I'm, I see that the deadlines is quite tough. So the idea is just to give them the new skills, they can cooperate, but uh, I'm not sure if those people can offer uh, their ideas on their own because I was asking them like last week, please share what you would like to. And there's like, whatever you, you know, uh, whatever you offer, we are happy to, but I, I see the lack of the initiative. Um, I know it's not the best partner like to work with, still people are very encouraged, but they, they need the help from the outside. What would you like, what do you would recommend in this situation uh, for workshops and trainings? So they have very good work working, they, they're clay, they are still developing in like, try to understand the digital uh, tools, uh, but it's very, it's very different, you know, it's not the community. So that's a question. Yeah, I mean, from, from our side, it, it is super important that there is that combination and maybe within this group, there's somebody that could benefit you or provide that, like maybe through Rosanna or also through Saad who's in the room or, um, 
maybe with Tabiso, what they're looking at offering. And I think that it's really valuable to explore what, what everybody in the room is doing and which angles they're coming from, if you guys connect from here and see how best to bring what you need together with what you can offer. Um, and the timelines, just to bear in mind that although the first prototypes or something to show should be ready by the end of May, beginning of June, that that really can be formative. I mean, if we talk about prototypes, maybe that could be you know a slight working prototype that has the files and we can see that it works and it's functional, but it doesn't necessarily have to be you know full scale. I'm just using an idea like a giant toilet that's been manufactured now, but it should be something that's working that we could see that it's viable. And then you have until September for the final documentation or completion of workshops or trainings, however you prefer to to set it up. So it is a bit tight, but at least if you consider till September, it's not too bad. Um, Aziz, do you maybe want to add anything about the viability of these types of workshops in the time frame um, or any of your comments for the workshops and training? So I, I uh, quite lost because you have the prototyping and you have workshops and training, and now you're talking about uh, finalizing prototyping. Does this deadline apply also for workshops and training? And what should be the result of the workshop and training? Is it the same prototype? So then I don't see the difference between those two goals, you know? Okay, I understand what you mean. So, I mean, in, in the framing that we put it in, so the one could be having developed something. So let's say I'll just use a toilet as an example. So yeah. a, a actual functioning toilet, whereas the other one could be developing actual workshops, which could be showcased as these are the things we'll be training people on. And then they could okay. have been administered, done, trained, at least a few of them by the deadline of September, but ideally they should be available for more people to learn and benefit from. So by September, it should be on the platform and people can use it and, and it's a viable training that they get that shows that they need it and they want it and it's valuable. So in a way, they, the product and the service is the same in the timeline. There should be something tangible to see that we can tell it will make sense and benefit people on the ground by the end of May and then at least ready to run, have run one or two, three, and um, actionable by September. Okay, so actually, uh, if you mean workshops and trainings, you mean not the conducting, but developing workshops and training that could be scaled and, uh, and okay, okay, now I understand. Yep, that's that's from my side. The Of course, you can propose different ideas if you want to do some pilots, et cetera. That's open. I mean, as Vicky and and... Um, Yuri said as well, things change quite often. So it may be that you need to pivot things slightly or people are manufacturing, we realize we need something different for the workshop or the trading. So there is a bit of flexibility in what you put together as long as it's valuable. Um, mm -hmm. For my, you, you raised your hand. Would you like to go ahead? If I, I hope I pronounce it. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, hello. I have a question. Uh, uh firstly uh maybe i introduce myself i'm roman i'm co-founder austria platform it's a makerspace in kiev and uh, last year we work uh, as uh, telecar operators now we're waiting on when this uh, our telecar uh, was uh, will registrate it and uh, we can continue our work uh, in our community, we are uh, some idea, first of all, uh, three ideas uh, to, to, this, uh, to this proposition, to your proposition. Uh, we have, we want to uh, create uh, two machine. First of all, it's uh, replicate uh, CNC Miller machine uh, uh, Maslow design. Uh, it's uh, Fraser work with uh, 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 not, 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 uh, uh, second idea, it's a uh, mixer for Glay, uh, for uh, 3D printer uh, who print uh, with Glay ceramic and ceramics. Yes, and uh, third idea, it's um, uh, we think about some collaboration with. Uh, uh, Five Academy, and uh, we want to try um, form some educational program in our Fab Labs. Uh, our, our Fab Lab, uh, maybe it uh, will be focused uh, on um, uh, develop uh, something like startups for IDPs or veterans, uh, or maybe other. Uh, 
other my, uh, other residents of our makerspace. And my question was uh, uh, about uh, it, it um, about uh, process uh, of uh, this uh, uh, con contracting. Uh, about deadline, about form of reporting. Uh, Vicky sent this question in chat, but I don't hear uh, answer on this question. It's, uh, uh, yes, for, uh, form of reporting. Uh, we need uh, organize this, uh, we, we need contract uh, like an NGO or like a private uh, person. And uh, yes. It is all my question. Sorry um, for my English. I don't. Oh, no, it's uh, great. It's perfect. It, yeah. Um, I it's think... much better than my Ukrainian. <laughs> yeah, much mine too. Than my Ukrainian. <laughs> um, maybe for the first question, I'll ask Aziz uh, just on the the product functionality of those two coming from the engineering background, um, and then I will answer a little bit more on the contracting and procedures. Yeah, like uh, you mentioned uh, about making a CNC, which is a lathe or, or a milling CNC, right? And uh, about making a mixer for uh, for the clay used in 3D printing, especially in the Delta Was printer. So like, uh, let's say that we are open to any product. You can make anything, but you should justify that with a need. If it's needed, we, you can sub, uh, apply for it. If there is a need for your machine, you can apply for it and it will be a good thing. So everything is connected to the need because this is something related to a real problem happening on the ground. It should be connected to what, happen, to what happens on the ground and to what people need. So if there is a need for the CNC, you are welcome. And if there is a need for the claim mixing machine, and you are welcome as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks, Aziz. Um, and before I hand over to Tabisa, I just wanted to mention that for the contracting, it does not need to be a not-for-profit or non-governmental. What we consider would probably be the most um, normal formatting that will take place would be person-to-person. Uh, -person. So we would contract you as an individual. And um, if you structure yourself as a team, then there may be one, two, three different contracts. Uh, but with that because we are the, it's contracted through global innovation gathering we're slightly more um, flexible and organic than maybe more bureaucratic structures so um, we will make it work in whichever way possible but there isn't a rule or regulation that you need to be not for profit or non-government organization just so that that's um, noted and I think that the other information here um, Aziz also mentioned that it isn't a restricted format it can be anything as long as the it is a problem that is solved and there's a need and that there is collaboration um, with other makers outside of Ukraine that could support you. And in this, it could be sourcing materials. It could be getting, you know, the prototype tested or created, if that makes sense, that you can check that everything functions if you're not able to access these types of machines or tools. Uh, so it's we're trying to leave the scope as broad as possible because things that are happening on the ground are changing so often that we don't want to restrict anything in that sense. I hope that makes it clear. Um, Vicky, is there anything you maybe want to add on that point? Or Yuri, for that matter. Mm, no. <clears throat> um, okay. Just checking, is the question answered? Okay. Um, if not, then just write a message or an email Roman okay because I think it's one of the most beautiful things about the call that you don't have to have an NGO and everything um, but that we can find ways yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm also adding all the questions all the questions to a document so I can share with you Kirsi and Vicky okay. thanks that's great I have my AI plugged in to take minutes, but let's see if it's if it's having a good day. Um, Tabisa, you raise your hand. Yeah, I just wanted to comment on uh, what Roman said and what the other lady said, and in terms of 
how our process works and see if it is really aligned. So how we work is we select 20 to 30 participants on the ground, uh, and then we take them through our co-creative design process. So it starts with them identifying the challenges, so their immediate needs uh, for their livelihood challenges. And then it takes them through the process where they would gather information to understand the problem better, eventually think of ideas and then choose the best ideas. The whole entire workshop ends with them having made five or six prototypes in teams. And then those, te those prototypes will be at a working prototype stage. And uh, then one of the things that we also teach them is basic business thinking. So how to cost their prototypes and how to price them and then develop a mini business plan around it such that if they want to start up, uh, like Roman said, for the veterans, a small enterprise or community-based uh, enterprise, then they are able to do that with their mini business plan and the prototype. Uh, so I'd be willing to collaborate with both the two to see how we can possibly, instead of going towards central Ukraine, maybe seeing how we can bring those people to Roman's uh, maker space, and then we form a team uh, from the Ukraine makers uh, that will become design facilitators. Because largely, as we know, refugees are people with skills too. And so they would probably have some maker skills already. They just maybe need access to tools and materials so that they can bring to life some of their, their solutions. And like you mentioned, some of the time, most people are afraid to put forward what they are thinking as ideas, but the process that we use allows them to be comfortable enough to actually take them through the process and then really bring out all the things that they are thinking. So it's a, it's a, it's a specialty that we have developed over the years as to how to unearth these ideas and challenges and uh, solutions from the people themselves. So if you are open to that, both Roman and the other lady, to see how we can collaborate to make it a reality, I'd be interested in having that deeper conversation. Um, thanks, Deviso. And just to mention that in the beginning of the chat, we just posted all the general information again on the timing, the budget, um, the basic breakdown, and um, yeah, thank you for raising some of those points in terms of needing to be a um, registered entity. So Ricardo's made a note of that as well. And other questions that we had here, um, we can also go to if there isn't another question, but I thought maybe to reach out in the chat to either Saad, Alex, or Kalvi, who just recently joined, um, if you have any questions for us as we go into the sort of last 10 minutes or so, you're welcome to raise your hand or, yeah. And meet your mic. Yeah, um, my apologies um, for for joining in late. I just missed up the the CET time. Uh, this no uh, daylight, daylight savings is making everyone crazy. <laughs> um, uh, the w one question was uh, I I might it might have already been answered. Uh, is there like a kind of a uh, a repository of like let's say um, a problem space where you know the challenges uh, that that is currently been identified already by the users on the ground that we can get access to um, because that might help us one get context on the challenges there um, and also if there is like some personas that we might have on a typical kind of the, our users who might be the most benefited that we might, we might be designing for. Um, if there are three or four different user personas, um, that might help us kind of identify who are we designing for and their pain points, um, and in and through our through our solution, where in which part of their life or that specific problem are we solving? We might not be able to solve the entirety of the problem, uh, uh, but kind of uh, maybe enable sometimes enabling them to solve a problem might also be part of the solution, right? So. So I just wanted to understand if there is a repository of those kind of like information that might help us go through a kind of a human center design process. Um, sorry if this might question might have already been answered. 
No, thanks. Thanks for that question. I I guess um I'd ask Yuri if he if he would be able to share some insight into basic challenges that are recurring or things that are uh, referenceable. Um, before we continue with the conversation on that, um, Yuri. Um, sure, Kristen. I, I uh, suppose that the the latest information uh, now have a telecar pilot because my info was uh, maybe from the, from the beginning of uh, winter 2020. Uh, yeah, 2022, 2023, it was about power supplies. It was about water as uh, Vicky told and uh, water cleaning systems. And it was about uh, energy storages and uh, internet solutions, maybe some kind of mesh networks when uh, uh, all the people have weak internet. And it was about the heating devices mostly. So uh, that was the challenges I, I, I know from, from contacts with uh, with people uh, around the country, and, and now I think uh, the Tolokar system on systematic basis visited different, again different regions, and they have uh, I think the latest info, what our community needed needed the most. Yeah. Oh, thanks very much, uh, Ricardo. Yeah, it's uh, just to point out maybe that we are here talking about from the outside and thank you very much Yuri for your presentation, but we can we can try to think in one kind of persona, you know, it's it's a country in war and some places are in need and energy, of course, you know, so uh, and and children and Hosanna said about children, you know, how how to deal in this strong situation, let's say like that, you know? And, and I remember since the beginning, you knew you, to you bring it again, you know, lighting, you, you don't have energy. How can you, how can you read during the night? How can you do your activities, you know? And how can you hide whatever, you know? So I think it's a critical persona, you know, in a critical situation and, and maybe this is the, the the call to collaboration. I think it was also Yuri who said, no, no, it was uh, the other guy, you know, <laughs> bring bring me some solutions, you know. I I have this, I have this tense situation. Uh, bring me some solutions, you know, and the kind of persona we can clearly see on the news, you know, and I'm not saying the you know, uh, of course, you you know the security. Uh, I I would say, Mister Tabizu, the security probably is what we watch on media. You know, uh, probably if you go in the cities that you are inside the bombing area, you will not be in a very secure place. But if you go to you know Kiev, Lviv, or things like this, probably will be a more, more secure place. You know. Uh, I think we, even though we are in an outside of Ukraine, you know, I'm in Brazil right now, the sun is shining, it's morning, but I can have an idea of the situation. The situation must, must be tragic, you know, and how can we support? Uh, but at the same time, I'm super proud of very bureaucratic questions. We should bring these questions to the table. No, Kirsten, you know, how can we contract? When can we start providing support? How can people on the ground can be connected? You know, how can we, how people that are applying can go to Yuri or go to, to the other guy that's saying here, sorry people about the names, Aiden or whatever. How can we ask more like, what are the groups that we work with, you know? I think it's very critical. The time is super short as, as Irina said, I think it was Irina, sorry. But I think it's all about urgency. Sorry, Vic, I'm so passionate sometimes. Bye. Um, no, thanks for that, Ricardo. And I think it makes sense, um, Kaldeep. I hope it answers to a certain degree. And I think this is also why we stress this point of really needing to collaborate because there are so many things that need to be created, supported, and provided that are open source. So 
from lighting, as Yuri mentioned, to you know even furniture, to training, to create lighting, as an example. So, um, because this call is out there, it's you know I guess a call to you as well to engage with Ukrainian makers. Um, we have in the group already, you know, two or three, and we will. I think from my side, what we'll try and do is just share an overview of some of the problems that we've already identified that we use to our, ourselves to be able to create the two streams um, and with what Yuri has put together, just a basic overview of some of these types of ideas in a repository that we'll share with you. There is also a, um, a GitHub room and channel that everybody is chatting on, which maybe makes sense, which I'll share with all of you that were in the call today as well as those who've applied thus far and those who are interested from the gig network and AMN. Um, but just to make sure that there is some, some sort of sharing on these topics. Um, but again, to contact people making things, use the contact in this group that we've had. Um, and if there are any additional questions that you're not sure about, feel free to ping myself um, or Aziz, and uh, we will get back to you as we're working um, from GigSite on this project together. And for people like Rosanna, and I know um, there's some other people working on education in here, I mean, children's education, of course, is crucial. So there's so many different avenues that we can explore. Um, but as we're coming to the end of our time, I'll just hand over to uh, Vicky to give a uh, closing. Hello, goodbye, see you soon. And uh, then to Aziz and Yuri um, before we close off. All right, thank you. I was typing away in the chat. <laughs> um, there's one thing I would like to highlight because I love all the things you said. Kuldeep, you're absolutely right. We should know who we design for. And Kirsten, you're absolutely right. That's why we do collaborative projects. So we don't work with personas, we work with persons. And um, there's just one thing that I would like to highlight, and that is something I said earlier. It's please do submit all your ideas, what you would like to do, how you can imagine it. Because Tabiso, I was honestly not even thinking that anybody would suggest an in-person workshop in Ukraine. Um, so please do submit it. Because even if it's not possible to do it in this call, um, there's there's really strong and beautiful support networks, and maybe somebody will be able to make it happen. And it might not be Gig, it might not be GIZ, maybe it's somebody else, but Yuri knows so many people, Roman knows so many people, Irina knows so many people, I know so many people. So it's like, there's, it, it might just happen. And um, please do submit, even if it might not work in this call, it would be great to know and, and give us something that we can pass on to others. And um, I think that's, that's the last thing I want to know as I wanted to say and the same also to to the Ukrainian interested parties and people um, do submit the problems you see the things you want to do, even if it includes machines that are more expensive than what's in the budget, even if it includes, I don't know. Um, a machine that you only know from Russia, which is impossible to finance through this call because there are sanctions. Um, we will find an alternative and we will try to find solutions. Just tell us what you want and tell us what you need and then we'll try to find a way. And I think those were my famous last words. So over to Aziz. Yes, thank you, Vicky. Uh, yeah. I echo back what Vicky, uh, Vicky said, and I really encourage you to submit your ideas and your solutions. So this is a chance to to give help to other people. And uh, so whatever you can do to help other people, you are welcome. But we are thinking about putting some 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 categories here. So if you think about a product or you think about a training a program or a workshop, then you can submit it and we can uh, work on that. So please, please, please uh, uh, think, uh, think about something that you can help people inside Ukraine and uh, submit it. And we will thank you really, really very much. So thank you both. Thank you, Aziz. And Avi, to you, Yuri, uh, before we sign off. Um, 
I want to thank you for such a great program to support uh, Ukrainians, and I think it also will support maker movement and and uh, uh, bring more light to to our community uh, inside the country, and I hope outside also. So uh, waiting for the next steps, and uh, as as Vicky told, I'm going to distribute uh, uh, with Roman with the other, with other spaces. We're going to distribute the call as far as as we know inside the community here. So thank you. Thank you so much, Yuri um, and Vicky and Aziz, and thanks everybody for being in the call with us today. Uh, do ping us if there's any questions. You know, we're all here to support and to help um, and to provide solutions for everything we possibly can in these dire times. So um, everything's welcome. We look forward to hearing from you and um, keep in touch. Thank you for joining us. See you soon. Bye. Cheers. Bye bye. We'll be waiting bye. your feedback. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Beautiful people. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Yo, yo, what's up? <laughs>